as a part of my journey across the upper eastern part of the United States of America, there's no better way than to wind up the end of the trip than this event here. I proudly bring you Corvettes at Carlisle. It doesn't get any better than Corvettes at Carlisle. I've got the unique opportunity now. This guy here, he's the culprit. Lance Miller, how are you, buddy? Life is good. I'm real good. Lance, uh, this, this, this means a lot to you. I mean, Corvette runs deep with you, and um, you go back a long way uh, with, with your dad, with, with Chip Miller. How do you feel? How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really good. When you look out the window of my office, I see just a stream of Corvettes out there, and that's what this is all about, the camaraderie of the car, the people, the smiles. Yeah. Absolutely, and to put you in the picture, it was Lance's father, Chip, along with Bill Miller, that uh, founded Carlisle Events a long time ago. And that's a unique story too, how they went to a car show once upon a time with their cars many years ago and were told or asked to leave because their cars weren't old enough, right? That's exactly right, and as a matter of fact, it was a Corvette. Believe it or not, it was a 1955. Wow. How cool is that? And I thought, well, why don't we start our own show? What a monster. <sighs> Lance, how many Corvettes can we expect for the weekend? Well, you're going to see, it's hard to say. Our show field itself is about 26 to 2,800 Corvettes. However, keep in mind that that's just the show field. We also have Corvette-only parking. There's a good another, I'm going to guesstimate, say four or 5,000 on the grounds. And then think of all the Corvettes out there that park just generally in the... The local area so there's a lot of corvettes lance tell me being the co-owner of carlisle events what does it mean to you to have seen the whole event scene grow as it has it's absolutely awesome the the thing that brings me the most joy is to see children out there and we do everything in our might to really focus on the kids and there's a reason for that we want to see it just grow we want to see it continue grow for a reason why? Because we have a passion for this hobby just like everybody else. It's in our blood, as you said earlier. It sure as heck in mine. If you stab me right now, it's probably oil. <laughs> so nevertheless, in reality, we want the kids to just jump into this, have a good time, and keep continuing this hobby. And the cars that are coming out today, look at them. I mean, they're amazing. Think of it. Back in the 60s, the best cars we ever had, everybody talks about them. Then all of a sudden, you look at the new cars that are coming out. Check it out. I mean, take a step back and really look at these cars. There's a war out there, and I'm proud to see it. Oh, how awesome is this? If you're into your classic Corvettes, you've got to appreciate this. And if you're right into them, you will understand what this car is. The number three car that won Le Mans back in 1960, driven by John Fitch. Now, this car has been painstakingly restored by Kevin McKay Corvette Repair Inc. in New York. And I'm sure you'll agree, has done an outstanding job. What's it worth? Doesn't matter. You don't want to know. It's priceless. But I will say this, millions of dollars. Number three car, won Le Mans, featuring here at Corvettes at Carlisle. It depicts an era where the Corvettes used to dominate with their V8 engines up against the European cars and won races a long time ago. Harlan Charles, welcome to Corvettes at Carlisle. Episode of Classic Restos 2 as we move on through series 17 of the show. Welcome. Well, thanks for having me on your show. It's nice to meet you. You were a little bit apprehensive about being seen in London. What's going on there, Harlan? Oh, that's going on. London, you know, we actually, we have a, there's a big Corvette club in the UK, actually, and, as well as Australia, and I was just over there a little while ago, and it's great to see that there's enthusiasm for Corvette all around the world. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, Information TV in London is Classic Restos. Hi, guys. And it's nice to, to hear that internationally, Corvettes are admired. I think they have been for ages, since their inception. Yeah, Corvettes have, has, has a really great racing history, you know, going back to win, winning its class in Le Mans in 1960. And I think everybody appreciates Corvette as, a, as an honest car, you know, one that's all about performance and driving. And I think in the recent years, our credibility winning at the 24 Hours of Le Mans has really enhanced the brand and the mark. And people know it's not just a car with a lot of power. It's a car that can win on the track and a car that also gets surprisingly good fuel efficiency in today's day and age, which people wouldn't expect from a, such a large displacement engine. Absolutely, and the thing is too, history of uh, muscle cars here in the United States, too, predominantly four-door cars, these are a two-seat package, um, you know, 
they were they were early with the two seat package v8 performance streamlined styling i mean really they were a, they were the introductory to a performance car sports car here in america Oh, definitely. You know, the Corvette since 1953, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary this year, and it's always been a true two-seat sports car. You know, we really wanted to do a sports car from the beginning. Zora Arca Stunto, the early Corvette chief engineer, wanted to build a Corvette in the European style, but an American sports car that could go and compete with the best all around the world. And over the years, you've seen the evolution of Corvette through the times and technology, and it, and it really is a world-class sports car. All right, here at Corvettes at Carlisle, the... Fletch. Oh, well, g'day, mate. How fancy seeing you here, mate. Uh, who, who have I got? Graham. Well, g'day, Graham, an Aussie. Absolutely. Oh, another Aussie. What's going on? <laughs> this is rather special. Look, coming to... It is special because you've just interrupted my piece. Well, sorry about that, but look, I had to, I had to do it. Yeah, like, that's all right. Like Corvettes at Carlisle, yeah. look, it's a place to be. I couldn't get over how big this is. And, you know, you got me here. Me, me personally. Absolutely, through your show, Classic yeah. Restos. Yeah. I saw your program last year, Chrysler's at Carlisle, yeah. and I thought, I've got to check this out, Carlisle events, and uh, lo and behold, there's an event here for Corvettes. So that's close to my heart at the moment, even though I'm wearing a Holden T-shirt. Yeah, well, it's closely affiliated. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, no, look, I've got to go and check this out. So as a result of your program, yeah. I've made the effort with yeah. my wife, Anna, yeah. to actually come over here. It's a bloody long way. <laughs> is a long way. It's a long way to go for a cup of sugar. <laughs> but look, it's well worth it, and uh, I'm enjoying so it. You made the trip because of classic restos. Absolutely. Oh wow. Yeah. That, that's what. That's emotional for me. That that really. You know, we're almost 20,000 k's from home. Almost fair chunk of that. And uh, to see fellow Aussies make the trip from my little TV show, that's great. No, well done. Thank thanks. You. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Graham. Well done, thank and you. thank you, Shannon, too, for uh, making the effort of uh, putting this show on. Yeah, well absolutely. done. Yep, thank they're you. a great sponsor. Thank you, Graham. No worries. Thank you, buddy. Bye bye. All right, and uh, um, okay, well, there you go. I can get back to me piece now, but I can't because I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It's as though it's become a second home for me. They cover around ten major events every year, and has become a main hub for TV coverage for classic restos. Now don't go anywhere because we'll be back with more Corvettes after this. Moving through Corvettes at Carlisle, we've got an Aussie, eh? What do you reckon? You can't keep us Aussies away. How are you, Jim? I'm very, very well, thanks, Fletch. Good to see you here. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you too. How many years have you been coming to Corvettes? Uh, this is my 13th year in a row. Uh, basically, uh, 13 years ago, we decided to just come have a bit of a look. And uh, I just loved it so much, and now it's a religion. It really is an awesome place, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there's just so many people that, you know, you meet, so many nice cars, good atmosphere. You know, over 2,000 Corvettes gather here, and really, on the planet, you won't find a bigger event. Oh, uh, look, I've been uh, to a lot of places in the world, and there's been nothing like this. I don't actually get to see, for the three days, I don't get to see the whole lot. Just don't see it. You do a TV show, you know, you, you do two half-hour episodes and, I mean, you know, you might have an opportunity for maybe ten interviews in that time. You, it's really just a draw card to, for people to watch the show and say, hey, that looks cool, I'd love to go. Right. But it's impossible to cover the whole lot. Yeah, no, you can't do it. You just can't do it. I mean, I come here on Thursday, leave on Sunday and I still don't get to see half the cars because uh, there's just so much going on. Yeah. Hi right, Jim, well thanks for coming up buddy. It's good to see you so far away from home mate. So Very, very good to see you here uh, doing classic restos and uh, keeping up the spirit. Good on you Jim, thanks buddy. Cheers. Hey, good day Fletch. How are you mate? I'm doing good buddy. Good. Hey, how about this house? Sad. Well it was sad. We've got a 1968 Corvette Stingray here. What a colossal car. This is beautiful. But a barn find. Forgotten for 25 years. Tell us the, tell us the deal John. I was sitting in a barn in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. I was doing work on the neighbor's house and uh, we're building the deck. He come over and asked me if I could do a bathroom for him. So when we walked through the lower section, I saw I could only see the tail light all right, and a little bit of the bumper, and I knew it was a, a C3. So then we start talking, and uh, two years later, he finally uh, we made a deal that I did the bathroom for the car. You know, and, and uh, I wound up putting out. He wound, it was twenty-three hundred dollars in labor and material for me to do the bathroom. I spent four hours there. All right, and the car is appraised now for sixty-two thousand and insured for fifty. So it was a really, really good deal. 
Hey, John, you, you need to do more bathrooms. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I just actually, we, I just did a basement for a 79 Corvette, yeah. but he gave me money also. Uh, yeah. So we picked that up on Monday. Hey, so, geez. Making money, yeah. getting Corvettes yeah. along the way. It doesn't get any better than that. Construction business. We have John's wife now, Kathy. Welcome. Kathy, through your eyes, what does the Corvette mean to you? Well, it's a part of a new family that we've joined, the Corvette family, which has been wonderful for us. Um, four years, and um, it was a long way for him to talk him into getting the car, but it's been nothing but fun. Everybody's been so wonderful, and we just absolutely love it. You can't beat car people. No, it's wonderful. We're just part of the family. It's amazing. It really is. And uh, what's your thoughts on him getting more bathroom work? He's uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the basement coming up now. Really exciting. Another one. Well, you know, that bathroom job that he did, that was certainly a job that didn't go down the plug hole. That wor it worked out well, didn't it? It sure did. Sure did. Yes. Thanks, Kathy. My pleasure. Oh, what am I saying? How do I end that? Tell me how I end it, Kathy. Nice to meet you, Flats. <laughs> Just a few features that make John and Kathy's Corvettes stand out. Check out the rolled guards, the hooker headers, and the diamond tuck seats. This car oozes the 1960s. All right, time for Randy now. Randy's got a gorgeous 65 Custom. We uh, see original cars. We've also got the Custom class as well. Randy, welcome to today's show. Fletch, thanks for being here. Uh, I hear you're doing a lot of nice work going around to see all the cars, so I appreciate you stopping by. That's all right. Thank you. You've got a glorious car here, uh, a 65 Custom. Have a look at this. This is magnificent. What was it like when you got it? Well, actually, it's a good story. Uh, back in 1988, it was found in a field, yeah. and the scavengers had taken all the parts off of it that they could sell. So a friend of mine pulled it out of the weeds. He put it together as what's called a driver, just putting it back that it would run on the street. And then about five years ago, I purchased it from him and then what I had done is called a resto mod so I stripped the complete car down to whatever it needed to be and started over with getting custom parts manufactured as well kind of the best go fast and yeah. customized parts to make it work like the newer cars today yeah. so resto mod is keeping the body style the same as a mid-year 1965 Corvette yeah. but getting the technology aspect yeah. working for speed and performance today with all the chrome yeah. the 427 motor uh, foose wheels things like that. The suspension by Speed Direct is phenomenal for a coilover system, so it rides and drives completely different from an older car, and it also enhances some of the uh, drivability of the newer cars today. Good on you, Randy. Thanks for the chat, mate. Nice catch up. Thanks, Fletch. Appreciate it. When it comes to black and very cool, we've got Jordan's 66 Corvette. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. Hey, Fletch. How are you? Good, buddy. How are you? I'm not bad. Not bad. Now, Jordan, tell us about this. This is, uh, this is nice. It's a 1966 uh, Corvette Roadster. Uh, 327, 350 horse. It's got uh, side pipes, knockoff wheels, uh, teak steering wheel, telescopic column, leather interior. Uh, it's a highly optioned car, very highly optioned car. How long have you had it? Uh, I bought this car in 2003. Uh, flew out to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and drove it back. Came back on, uh, on Route 66 with my wife and down through West Texas and El Paso. Wow. Yeah, I made a nice trip of it. How cool is that? I do Route 66 each year. Yeah? yeah. Well, it's, that was the only time. I, I'd, I'd like to go back the other way on it eventually. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there someday. It's an awesome road. And speaking of which, if you want to do Route 66, go to classicrestos.com.au. Click on the Route 66 icon for 2013. I'll be going in May, and I can hardly wait. It's always a fantastic trip. And, you know, it's a funny thing. There's so much stuff that you see each year different that you either drove past or you missed the year before. Well, that's why you want to have like three or four of these, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's why guys do. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lesson in frustration, really. Well, it's hard work filming for Classic Restos going along. It's a massive trip, but uh, it's a nice environment. Now, with this car, Jordan, how was it when you found it? Have you had to do much to it, or don't tell me you were lucky enough to score it as is? I bought it with a lot of the options. It had a white interior, uh, white vinyl. I changed that to black leather. Um, I've done a whole lot of mechanical work to it. Um, cosmetic work is, is always ongoing, but um, uh, new tires and stuff, I, I've done them where you start way down. And so buying them up at a certain level is, uh, is the way to go, I found. Absolutely. And so uh, it, it looks a lot like it did, but uh, we, 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 we tweaked it around a bit. Time for Ed on the show now. How are you, Ed? Good. How are you doing, Fletch? Great, mate. Great. Great day today, isn't it? Well, it is. And, and you'd have to have a great day every day in this. This is a beautiful car. This is amazing. Thank you very much. We certainly enjoy it. 
We've had the car a little over two years. And uh, have you done much to it? Uh, the car pretty much came as it is. Yeah. We did uh, detail the engine compartment, do a few little things on the outside, but other than that, it's pretty much the way it came. Uh, weren't cars in 1959 amazing? 1959 Corvette 283 V8. Look at the inside, the opulence. I mean, they were just so beautifully detailed, weren't they? Oh, they certainly were. They don't make them like this anymore, and we get so many comments about the car, and especially the color of it. Ed, I mean, do you realize what you have here? Well, we're very lucky about that, and uh, we're going to keep this one for a long time. Yeah, good on you, Ed. Well, thanks for catching up. It's well, my pleasure, Fletch. It's been a great great talking to you. Well, absolutely, you know, and it's worth traveling from one side of the earth to the other to catch up with people just like yourself, and I appreciate that, so thank you. Our pleasure. Many thanks. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV. And episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au. Well, there goes another Classic Restos. Thanks for riding along with me for DVD sets and to contact the major sponsors go to classicrestos.com.au Classic Restos proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance and the tradingpost.com.au